This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey folks, I'm 10 Hundred. You know, for a long, long time, I've had an idea in the back of my head that I've always wanted to execute. And that is to create a custom deck of art playing cards. Now this is something that's been in the back burner of my mind for years and years and years, not to mention the dozens and dozens of comments I've actually gotten from you guys saying, hey, 10 Hundred, it might be kind of cool if you made a custom playing card deck with your art on it. And I was like, oh, I want to so bad. I was always a little bit daunted and overwhelmed by the amount of individual people pieces of art that I would have to produce to make a custom deck of playing cards. So I think this video right here is gonna be the first video in a series where I go through the process researching how to manufacture these playing cards, figuring out how to get them out into the world. And this is just gonna kind of be a big project for me that I'm ready to sink my teeth into and dive into. So come along on a custom playing card art card adventure with me. Here we go. And so, our hero 10 Hundred fell down the rabbit hole of playing card research. Okay, I've been researching things for a few hours now, and I think I have come to some conclusions. First of all, I think I'm gonna be using the United States Playing Card Company, which basically means that my cards are gonna be bicycle cards. That's good, that's quality. Now this is usually how I like to do things. Before I create a new piece of art or merchandise or anything like that, I usually like to look into the manufacturing process to know what kind of limitations I'm gonna be facing, you know, what size does my art need to be, what file format. It looks like they accept Photoshop files, but they kind of prefer Illustrator files. I like working in Photoshop a lot more. Maybe what I should do is like make one or two pieces of artwork and send it to them and be like, what do you guys think of these art files? Because the last thing I wanna do is like get to the very end and then they're like, we can't print this. So I think the first thing that I'm gonna do is start doing a pencil sketch and see where that takes me. All I know right now is that I just want these things to be super freaking cool when I'm done. So let's get sketching. Here we go. Alrighty, I got a pencil sketch of the Queen of Hearts here that I'm somewhat happy with. I think it looks pretty cool, but I definitely struggled with this one. You know, when I start a project, I'm like, what am I gonna draw? What's this gonna be? And I was just kind of a little bit in a place where I was just stuck with this thing. You know, a lot of times when you watch my videos, it doesn't come through of how much I struggle with my own art. There's the cool video edits and there's like the bombastic music and don't let that trick you into thinking that <laughs> I don't sit here and just struggle and labor over this art. There were so many moments in this where I was just just like, I'm just gonna delete this thing, erase this whole thing, start over, this sucks. But I kept pushing it. I don't just sit there and just like, print this out, I stop, I take breaks, I step back, I look at it, go through all those anxious thoughts of like self-doubt and self-loathing. So if you guys watch my videos, if you're an artist out there and you're like, I need to be like 10 hundred and just like knock it out and just, you know, he just does dope art and doesn't even have to try, like don't get tricked by my video editing. I am feeling all the same thoughts that you're feeling. I go through moments of just absolutely despising my art. An average like decently performing video will get 100,000 views in the first couple couple weeks or something. So it's like, oh man, a hundred thousand people are gonna see me just suck. <laughs> so the pressure is real, but all that long windedness being said, I'm pretty happy with what I got so far. So I'm gonna take this and shoot it over to Photoshop and start coloring it and designing it. And I think that this step right here is pretty important because I want my entire deck of cards to have kind of a cohesive color scheme is what I'm thinking right now. And the decisions that I make on this first card, if I like the way that it turns out, will probably influence the design and aesthetics of every other card in this deck. So, time to jump into the design part. I actually really like this part. Here we go. Early on in my art career, I was passionate about turning my art into merch. I saw the potential of making art more affordable and putting it into fun and interesting everyday objects. Making a deck of art playing cards is such an interesting project to me because it's a great way to feature my art, but it also serves a purpose. I love games. I love things that bring people together in the real world. Sitting around a dining room table, playing a game with family or friends, laughing, sharing the experience is one of my absolute favorite things. So I wanna be able to create something that can bring people together, maybe create some new memories with something as simple as a card game. 
Okay, I have finished the Queen of Hearts. She's looking pretty cool. Let's pop open Photoshop here. Oh, I forgot to start the screen recording. Idiot. All right, there she is, my beautiful queen of hearts. She's rocking the orange and the teal. This one was inspired by one of my favorite silkscreen prints I've ever done, the second edition colorway of the ultra mega silkscreen prints. And she's looking saucy. Now off camera, when you guys weren't watching, all sneaky like, I did some shading on it too. So let me turn on the shading. What's cool about doing these videos like this in a little bit of a series is I can bounce ideas off of you guys. So right here, we've got the flat color version, just solid colors, looking pretty cool. And here is the shading. Bop. Boom. A little bit more highlights, a little bit more shadows, a little bit more rendered, a little bit more depth. Let me know what you guys think of this. Here we go again. This is shading, no shading, flat colors, back to shading, bop, 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 bop. Which one do you guys like more? I think I might be leaning towards the shading. I think it just gives it that extra bit of depth, but this is what I'm thinking so far for the Queen of Hearts. So. I think what I'm gonna do now is send this into my lady over at the, um, what is it? Um, United States Playing Card Company, I think that's what it's called. And just be like, hey, this is my art file. Can you please take a look at this or have your printing department take a look at this and let me know like what kind of issues I'm gonna be facing because if I am making stuff that can't be printed, I need to know like as soon as possible before I put a bunch more work into doing this stuff. But I'm also very impatient. So while I send that into her, I think I will start on the Jack of Hearts, the King of Hearts and the Ace of Hearts and get my face cards for hearts knocked out. Let's keep it pushing forward, here we go. Each one of these cards took me about 12 hours to complete from the sketching, to the flat colors, to the shading, to the layout. Throughout the design process, I'm thinking about the constraints of the project, the small size of the cards, printing in CMYK, and thinking about the cohesiveness of the project while trying to make each card somewhat unique. I want these cards to belong together and feel like a completed project when you hold them in your hands. For the sketching process, I'm using Procreate, which is an app on my iPad, and then I shoot the sketch over to Photoshop on my computer to complete the coloring process and the design process. I wanted to do this project as a series of videos, not only because it would just be like an insanely long video if I drew 54 cards in one video, but also I really wanna be able to bounce ideas off of you guys. I'm designing these cards for you guys, and because of the way this video series is formatted, hopefully I'm designing these cards with you guys too. So often when I make a new drop or a new piece of merch, I make the whole thing, I make a video about it, at the very end of the video I'm like, and it's out now, go get it, and everybody goes and gets it, but even though you guys usually like crazy support the projects and I'm so thankful for that, I'm always a little bit like, I hope people like this, I hope they think it's cool. So doing a project this way is really exciting to me because I can pay close attention to the feedback that the majority of you are providing, and I'm just really excited about doing a project this way. We'll see how this thing grows and continues to build and what kind of finished product we will come up with. Sup? <laughs> All right, I have completed the Queen of Hearts, the King of Hearts, the Jack of Hearts, the Ace of Hearts, and I'm feeling pretty good. I wanna show you guys. All right, so here is the Queen of Hearts. You've seen her before. Next one I did was the Jack of Hearts. Ooh, I like this guy. What do you guys think of him? I think he's pretty cool. Next up, the King of Hearts. A very swarthy gentleman, if I do say so myself. And then for the Ace, I just drew a crazy mashup of characters in the shape of the heart. Definitely feeling it. Now, I emailed the Queen of Hearts over to Nicole at the United States Playing Card Company. I said, Nicole, how's my art files looking? She said, you good. But while you guys weren't here, I've been sneaking around a little bit and I was also playing around with a black background. Boom. Now, I think that's looking pretty cool. I think that's pretty popping. Black background, white background. So I also emailed her a version of the black background. I said, hey, you know, is there any known issues with doing a black background? And she said, sometimes when you punch out the cards, if you have full bleed, you can get a little bit of chipping. I don't know what chipping is. It doesn't sound very good. So I'm kind of thinking, 
thinking I shouldn't do the black all the way to the edge and instead maybe just go to this outer line right here. So if we grab a rectangle and just kind of drag it out and do something like that, where it's, it's also kind of cool because it's like a frame within a frame. She's kind of popping out from the black area a little bit. That way, hopefully there won't be that kind of chipping or whatever she said there would be. So here they are with the black backgrounds kind of going on. I want to bounce ideas off of you guys. Matter of fact, when I put this video out, maybe over on my community tab, I'll put a little poll that says like white background, black background. And those of you who have watched this video all the way to this point will know what the heck I'm talking about. You can vote. I'm still a little 50-50 on it. I think a black background playing card is a little bit more unique because like, you know, when you go to the store and you buy a deck of cards, they're going to have a white background. But these are, you know, these are artist cards and maybe a black background is a little bit more avant-garde. I could even do like a uh, freaking uh, freaking navy blue navy blue background. Let's see what that looks like. I mean, that ties into the color scheme even more, but the is the black more popping? I need you guys to help. We're collabing, bro. Come on, let's go. Let's do this. I also wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the release of these cards. I have a couple of ideas for that that I want to bounce off of you guys. But first, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor. I'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. Lil Chubbo, how's it going, bro? Thanks for taking this meeting with me. Yeah, hey, manager, Lil Chubbo's in the house. I have come here for the meeting. What you want to talk about? Uh? Well, Lil Chubbo, our last merch drop went really well. But you know, with less shows and events going on, I think you could use a new way to connect with your fans. Now, hear me out. I've been thinking a lot about this. Picture this with me, a Lil Chubbo YouTube channel. Oh, oh, Lil Chubbo, how we gonna learn how to make the vids? Adobe Premiere, baby, what is it? Make a thumbnail so we could get the clicks, but I don't have no skills except a rap and spit, Lil Chubbo. <sighs> it always catches me off guard that this guy raps everything he says. <clears throat> well, Lil Chubbo, I have just the solution. Skillshare! Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. They have classes on filming, editing, sound, after effects, animations. Shoot, they even have an awesome awesome class by MKBHD on how to make YouTube videos from start to finish. Lil Chubbo, oh snap, Skillshare is on top. We can learn the skills we need so we can make the crop. Plus, listen, the word on the street says the first thousand of 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Hip hip hooray, hands in the sky, ask me who I am. Who are you? I'm a Skillshare kind of guy with all these new skills, we gon' run the game. I'm the king of YouTube, baby, say my name. Oh, little Chubbo, yeah. Did, did I do it right? Okay, so the playing card adventure has begun. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about was the release of these cards. Now, I got two options here as I see it. One, probably the easy route, is to just eventually, when this project kind of comes to completion, put them on my website. You go to my website, if you want them, you get them, I ship them out to you. We got a whole operation set up for that. Option two is the Kickstarter route. Now, if I do it on Kickstarter, they will kind of take a cut of the sales, which is like how Kickstarter operates as a business. So it could potentially mean a little bit less profit, but if I put them on Kickstarter, my fans might go to Kickstarter, back the project on there, and then because of the support of my fan base, the Kickstarter may gain some traction on that platform and be featured on Kickstarter, which may in turn bring some eyeballs into the project, into my art, that weren't necessarily ever exposed to my artwork. What are some things that I'm not thinking about? What do you guys think about the Kickstarter route? versus keeping it close to home, keeping it on the website thing. It's something to think about as the project progresses, but we got time, we got time to think about that. So let me know down in the comments. So thank you guys for taking this ride with me. If you like this video, definitely leave a like. Let me know if you like this kind of format, a little bit different for your boy. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already. Thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are the coolest people on the internet. And I guess this is the end of this video. Peace out. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Mmm, sayonara. Is that everything I wanted to talk about? I guess so.